Okay, this is the only thing that's gone wrong so far, which is great. That is way fewer things gone wrong than usual. Well, well, well. Come. Hello everyone, welcome. Today we will be baking like five different things. We're baking a lot of things today. We're doing them all at the same time. So today we're gonna make a banana bread. We're gonna make apple crumble. I think with like cherries as well. Why am I making all these things at the same time? Because I am somewhere new. This, this, I live here now. And a variety of loved ones uh, helped to make this happen. So they're all gifts. First step, besides the apron, that's like step zero. The actual first step is to clean the kitchen. I think I will start probably with the crumble because that is the easiest. And then we will do the banana bread and then we will do the cakes. For the crumble, we will need flour, sugar and butter and oats for the crumble bit and probably some other stuff that I forgot to mention. For the filling, we're gonna have apple, other kind of apple and cherries in light syrup just to add some goop. Goop is important. And it's super simple, we just make the crumble in one bowl we make the filling in another bowl, and we put them into the baking dish, and then we bake them for like an hour. Then when it's done, you serve it with custard or ice cream. Bake in like a medium temperature oven. I'm hot, but not like really, really hot, but not like cold, obviously. How much of any ingredient, you ask? Well, um, you know. Contrary to popular belief, baking is not an exact science, and you can do what you want when you want, it's just totally made up and the amounts don't matter at all. I'm sure that's something that we can all agree on. Anyway, I will show you what texture we need to achieve and then how you get there is up to you. Oh, the oats. Not every crumble uses oats. I think they're quite useful for making it extra crumbly. And sultanas, again, totally optional. And they're very sweet, so you don't want too many. Yeah, don't want too many of these. Obviously what you do and don't add depends on who you're making it for. Okay, that's looking pretty good. I don't think there's enough of it. Many recipes suggest more butter and more sugar than I'm using, but my dad's diabetic, so... We're not gonna have that! Okay, for bowl number two, we get one kind of apple that gets cut into bigger chunks, and these will kind of keep their shape. And then we have another kind of apple which we can cut up finer, and it will make, like, the goop. It'll go with this stuff, and then that will comprise the filling goop. Don't doubt. Doubt is the first step to failure. Always have full confidence in everything you're doing, no matter what. Pitted black cherries and light syrup. Cherry pie filling is best. Ah! Okay, it's fine. <sighs> oh, I went on the side. Okay, this is the only thing that's gone wrong so far, which is great. That is way fewer things gone wrong than usual. Great, I wanted the countertop to be pink anyway. Alright, and mix. I'm 
not sure we have enough top to go with this, so I'm gonna uh, just make some more. So you know, if not measuring stuff is more fun, just don't measure it. To me, if it is slightly imperfect, I don't, like, it's not the end of the world. Slight imperfections is not the end of the world. Major imperfections, it kind of is, because this isn't for me, it's for someone else. And, you know, if they don't like it, that's kind of the entire point of what we're doing. Okay, more, oops, okay. If you have that dark brown sugar with the molasses in it or something, that's pretty good in this too. Okay, that's improved things a little bit. Let's see how it fits in the... Excuse our container. Let's just chuck all the filling in. <laughs> if you bake this for long enough, the apples will start to like melt and they'll make the syrupy goop and so some of these cherries. But again, perfection is not what we're going for. It's never what we're going for. Perfection is the enemy of actually making anything. That good, that's a good amount. All right, let's see how much. Ooh, cinnamon? Yes, I forgot to add cinnamon to the top. Cinnamon goes so well with this kind of thing. Squirt, squirt! In it goes. Oh, let's move it out. Let's move it out. It's gonna be a whole thing. It's gonna be incredible. Yeah. That's looking pretty fantastic. I like to cover it with a little bit more oats on the top because then that'll, that'll toast. Uh, same with a little bit of sugar. Sugar on the top, it'll uh, make a crust on the crumble because it'll caramelize a little bit in the oven. That's our layering. And that is ready to go in the oven for like at least an hour, uh, not too hot. Like I said. Oh, hot, hot, hot. <clears throat> In we go. Now, how does the timer thing on this work? Pray that works. Also, have you seen my oven gauntlet? Look at this thing, it's so good. Okay, that's thing number one, done. We can do, next, the banana bread. Very doable. This, this is my recipe, our recipe. Me and my darling, my love, my, this one is for my mom. She loves banana bread. She has it with her coffee. She has like four coffees a day. She has coffee at 10 p.m. She has banana bread at 10 p.m. Who am I to judge? Who am I to judge? I'm gonna do the crumble at 200 degrees Celsius. If you use Fahrenheit, the number that that is, is Google it, move to a different country that uses normal measurements. Hope that helps. And the things that we will need, self-raising flour, sugar, baking soda. Where's the baking soda? Powder. Oh. There it is. Wait, baking soda or baking powder? I can't reach the top cupboards very easily. And if I can, I can't see what's in it, so. Also, I'm old. Okay. Ground cinnamon, salt, butter, two eggs, milk, two slash three mashed bananas, vanilla extract. I have these bananas that were in the fridge and I don't know what's wrong with the fridge, but they froze. Like, that's why they look like this. They're thawing. I didn't know that was an an option. I don't know why the fridge is so cold either, but yeah, the milk also froze. So this recipe also uses one bowl for the dry ingredients and one bowl for the wet. So I'm just gonna reuse the bowls that I used like five minutes ago for the other thing. We actually need to measure for this one. Big upgrade. Oh, huh. why is that open? So I'm gonna make, uh, do I have two tins? I would normally make double the amount, that's why I have so many bananas, but I actually only have one tin to put it in. So, the normal amount it is. For me, half the fun in measuring anything. 
is making sure it's exact to the gram. For no reason. It does not need to be, but I just like it better than this. I actually have the correct measuring thingies for teaspoons, not just a spoon, the actual measurement magic. Didn't think I could be this high tech, did you? I don't know what could have made you think that. The amounts don't matter at all. Only the finest equipment here at sharpsartisan.com. Oops. I think it'll be slightly more than a teaspoon, but my heart wishes it so. Flour, sugar, baking soda, and salt. That's all the dry ingredients. Right, which is that? Okay. 50 exactly. Perfect. But for this one, it's important not to soften the butter first. The butter needs to be in blobs as it cooks. It makes like pockets, like of air or something. I don't know. If your butter is melted or the ingredients are overmixed, it just won't be as good. It will not be good. Two eggs. I should probably mix the eggs first. No, 75 mil. That's like 75 grams, right? Well, unlike with the dry ingredients, I cannot remove the excess, so... We're just going to have to learn to calm down. I'm gonna use these weird fridge bananas because to be honest, I don't really wanna eat them. Probably only need two of these. There you go. No, a tiny piece of banana fell. 261, that's like 40 grams over. It's not like I can take it out. Actually, I can just eat pieces, can I? 250? 249? 243? No, I'll leave it at 225. Because most of the rest of bananas are in the mixture. It's like lightly mash the bananas. Not too much, but like a bit. Fork, it's not doing the best job. I know in my heart what would do the best job. I was so concerned with not overmixing it that I very much undermixed it. It's too thin because there's no goop. The goop has to be right always in baking, always. It's too cold as well. A lot of this stuff came out of the fridge. I am only saying it's too cold, not for a scientific reason, it's just making my hand a little bit cold and I don't really like that. Okay, well, since my hand is already wet, I might as well mix it with my hands. Now, the recipe says add the wet ingredients to the dry. So, okay, well. Oh, I so regret using my hands for this. I'm so regretting this. Oh, why did I do this? How am I gonna get it off my hands? Oh, it's stuck in a bowl. Everything I touch becomes worse. <laughs> Ooh, I don't really like it. Here, is it too late to take it off my hands? Maybe that's where the phrase take it off my hands comes from. I don't think it, prob it probably isn't from there at all. Okay, that's good enough. We can wash his hand. And then we can use the fork. Okay, so valuable lesson learned. Let's never do that again. I think we have the goop. Let's show you. Do you see it's goopy, but there's plenty of chunks of banana. There's bits, flecks of cinnamon. It's everything you want in life. So before we put that in there, Get the tin, get a bit of butter, grease it, grease it up. No one ever cooperates with me. <laughs> Whoa, it almost flew right away from me. 
And that happens sometimes, and that's just a fact of life. There's no way to prevent it. There is just nothing you can do to prevent certain things in life, no matter how hard you try. Um, there's no better way of doing some things. It just has to be that way only. Ta-da! Another actual proper utensil, the spatula thing. Right, can you see? You can see, yeah. Go goop, go! I feel like the goop is a little bit thicker than it usually is today. We give it a wiggle. Now, there is one more step before we get this ready for the oven. We're gonna make a little mixture of cinnamon and sugar and put that on the top. Usually you would use a bowl for this, but I can't be bothered. All right, we're gonna sprinkle it on the top and it's gonna make the best crust ever. Ta-da! Oh, the heat! Ah. <sighs> Crumble out. Got the bread in. Well, let's take a quick look at this. All right, there is the crumble. It's caught a little bit. It's a tiny bit burnt, but it should be nice and goopy on the inside. Thank you so much for watching. I have been having loads of fun. Stay tuned for more. Subscribe if you liked it. Like if you liked it. You know, you know all that stuff. Let me show you the sunset. That's not bad, it's, it's nice. If you want to start it with something else or neither that, I guess you can just kind of like do it. You can just do what you want if you want to do that, I guess you could do that.